Good morning, friends. First off, I just want to commend you for getting quiet so well today. There, and this, this, this hush falls over the whole sanctuary as we wait for the live stream to kick in. It's part, part of the fun of fil filming before a live studio aud audience these days. Cu couple of quick uh, announcements before we get into worship this morning. Within your worship materials, you should have a connect card that you can use to let us know that you are here or how can we or how we can be praying for you or how that Pastor Angie or myself can be in contact with you if you'd like to speak with one, one of us. You can drop that out. You can drop that off in one of the plates out in the narthex as you exit today. And if you're online with us, there is a digital connect card that we would love you to make use of as well. I think there's something going on tonight. Kelly, Kelly is, do, do, do we have an event planned tonight? Just a little something. By little something, she means the now world famous Montfort Heights United Method Methodist Church. Drive through nativity. Friends, there, there's buzz, there is excitement. It's going to be a wonderful night. So if you're a part of the volunteers, part of the crew for that, thank you so much. If you can be here by 3.30 today, to help to set up, that would be great. At the very latest, please be here at 4.45 as we will get underway at 5.30. We're still hoping to get some donations of some firewood today, if maybe you can help us out with that. We'll use that some tonight to help keep our carolers warm. We'll also use some of that on Christmas Eve as well at the 5 p.m. service that's gonna be outside. So if you can have some wood up here by 3.30, today that would be great if not we, we will go out and get some but if you have some wood and God puts that on your heart to help us out we would appreciate it so one more li little thing to share before we get go going we had our last blessing bag Saturday for the year it was yesterday we'll be back out on Saturday Jan January the 8th for our next one but one of our regular fam fam families came up and gave us a card yes yesterday and I just want to share this. It's not long. It says, to the Montford Heights United Methodist Church congregation. Not to me, not to Anna, not to Sarah. Made out to all of us. Thank you for helping me and my family through these hard times. Your compassion for others is greatly appreciated. And is signed the Reeves family. And I share that because that is not about what any one individual or what in, in any one team is doing. That is what we are doing as a church family. To show a family who just needs a li little bit of help. How much that, that we care, how much that we love them, how much that we see them and recognize the place where we can step into to their lives to make it a bit better. So as we gather here for Advent, as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, today. It's, I think it's my honor and my privilege just to, just to share a bit of how what you are doing, friends, is being seen and how it's being viewed and recognized right here in the community. So, all right, it's enough just talking, friends. Let's get into worship. I invite you to sit back and relax as you take in the prelude that Marianne has for us this morning. Angels we have heard on high.
Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand as you might be able, and let's join together in the call to worship this morning. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way of our salvation. That we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. We're going to invite Roger and Drema Banta up here to light our Advent wreaths this morning. Friends, love waits for us at Advent. Love waits for us to care. Love waits for our compassion, freely offered and freely shared. In this time of preparation for the work of co-creation, for the birthing of a world where faith shapes all that we do. Love is born in us anew. Today, we offer the light of love to illumine the door of welcome. May we offer this light in our hearts, in our lives, and in our church. May love awaken us to possibilities and lead us to greater hospitality. There is room in this inn, a house for the holy. Tell you what, let's go ahead and stand. And we're going to sing just the refrain from O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 211. And then we're going to remain standing for our morning song, O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 230.
friends, you may be seated. Our first lesson comes to us from the prophet Micah. We are in chapter 5, verses 2 through 5, the first part of verse 5. Hear this word given to us from the prophet. Now you all are walled around with a wall. Siege is laid against us with a rod. They strike the ruler of Israel upon the cheek. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephratah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. May God add his blessing to the reading, hearing, living, and fulfilling of his word. Amen. He shall be the one of peace. Mm. Friends, there is so much on our prayer plates. If you are part of the prayer chain, you've seen some of those prayers coming in. Um, if you are part of other prayer circles, you've seen the uptick. If you've watched the news, you know that there's a lot going on in this world that could use a little extra prayer cover. Amen? Amen. So we come to the Lord this morning with hearts that are full. And we sing that, that lyric. I don't know if it hit your heart quite the same way as it hit mine. But, O oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Did it get your heart? When you sang it this morning, because it just kind of got me a little bit differently, hit me a little bit differently. So friends, know that all of those things that are on your heart this morning, whether you have given word to them or not, whether they are silent or shared, God hears them. And God knows exactly what it is that you need right here and right now. So let's take it to the Lord in prayer. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray once again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here in this space today and in the days to come. Pour out your spirit on those who are not with us, whether they are at home or on the road, whether they are traveling or working or resting or healing. Lord, you know you know what we need. And God, you know what we want, too, because we're your children, and we children tend to have a long list of wants. 
but you are an amazing parent and you have so much patience with us. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. Your patience, your grace, your unconditional love, all of these things shape us, fill us, replenish us. So we come to you, Lord, this day, longing to be made whole once again, praying for restoration, for redemption, for wholeness and for healing, for peace and for calm, for extra doses of hope and peace and joy and love. So holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Shine your light upon us, in us, and through us. Give us, Lord, what we need. Remind us the differences between needs and wants and desires and use us Lord use us not only today not only this week not only in this season but every single moment of every single day help us be your light help us point others to you so that your hope, your peace, your joy, and your love will be at work in this world. This, this, Lord, is our prayer. Even as we lift up that prayer that the first disciples learned, that you taught to us and them all those years ago, when we boldly pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. We forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It's been killing Declan up here, by the way, because I have a bag full of bags. So, <laughs> extra suspense. Hey, um, does anybody at school still do show and tell? Yeah, you still get a chance to do that every now and then? Like, do you have an assigned day or once a month? Yeah, yeah. A little ticket? Oh, then you get to bring something in and tell. Yeah. Do you do that, Molly? Show and tell? Not yet. Eli, you ever done show and tell? You know how it works? Where you show something and you talk about it? Yeah? Okay, well, I have a special challenge for us today. Um, I'm going to... Well, I was about to tell you. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a bag. Every bag is, is a little different, what's inside of it. And you're going to look inside the bag. Um, and and you, I want you to think of the thing inside the bag. And I want you to think of something amazing about that, uh, that thing. <laughs> Will you be very disappointed if I tell you it's not food? Okay, it's not food. 
I, sh I just go rip the Band-Aid off. There's no food in the bags. Every bag is different, and some of you are going to look at the thing, and you're going to be like, what? But I want you to think of something amazing about the thing in the bag that you have. Everyone's different, okay? I'm going to give you a minute, and then we're going to show them, and we're going to tell them the amazing thing about the thing in the bag, okay? All right. Turn this back on. That would be helpful, right? Oh, you want to go first. Okay. Can you? It's going to be Declan's turn. And when we're taking a turn, then we're the speaker, okay? All right. So you're going to show it to him. You're probably going to have to tell them in the back what you have exactly. They may be able to see it, but if not. And then I want you to tell them something amazing about that thing. Okay. What do you have? A spoon. A spoon. What is amazing about a spoon? I can use it to eat. You can use it to eat. That is amazing. It's an amazing tool that, that someone created. Okay. Okay, put that back in your bag. All right, who wants to go next? All right, Molly's going to go next. You need to hold them up high, Molly. Okay. Now tell everybody what you have. I thought you wanted to go next. Yeah? Do you want me to tell them what you have? Okay, hold them real high. She has some hair rubber bands. She has some hair rubber bands. What do you do with those, Molly? Like they keep them out of our faces. You have one in your hair right now, right? Another amazing invention. I mean, what would we do if we didn't have hair rubber bands that didn't rip our hair all the time? Who wants to go next? All right, Keller's going to go next. Here I come. All right, show them all what you got. Hold it up high. I have a clip. A clip? Okay, what is amazing about that clip? You can put it on things to hold stuff tight, and it won't get spoiled. Uh, I like it. I like it. Very descriptive. So we our chips, we can continue to eat them day after day. They don't go stale. Whew, it's a good thing that thing exists. Okay, Eli or Zimmer, who's going next? Zimmer's going next? You know there's a... Oh, Marianne wants to go? Okay, here I come. Okay. <laughs> can you hold it up for everybody to see? This is a beautiful gold bow. What is amazing about that? Well, when I put it on a present, the wrapping looks so much prettier. All right. Thank you. Can I have your bag and your bow back? Okay. <laughs> All right. Does, is anybody else going to go? All right. Zimmer is going to go. Okay. Here I come, Zim. All right. Show everybody what you got. I have a marker. Okay. What color is your marker? Green. What makes that marker so amazing? You can write can use it to write something. Very good. Can you put it back in your bag? Eli, are you going to go? Okay. What do you have? Tape. What? Tape. Okay. He has a roll of tape. Can you hold it up for the people on the way back? Okay. What is so amazing about tape? Yeah. What? Have you ever needed to use tape? Okay. For what? I don't know. Have you ever had a page rip? Okay. It holds things together. It holds things together. All right. Everybody put your things back in the bag. Okay. So that's kind of how show and tell works, right? And we're going to put the bags back in the bag. Okay. Because there's no food today. <laughs> Could you please feed your children? <laughs> okay. We got to move on. May I have my bag? Molly, may I please have my bag? Thank you. Okay, so here's Miss Kelly's point. Did you know that the Bible is filled with show and tell? What? Yeah, yeah. When I open my Bible, I know this is crazy that I was going to come to this. So when I open, I'm about to tell you then. So when I open my Bible, I read about people like David. And he was brave and strong. He went up against a giant, right? I see David. And I'm told about his bravery, and then he praises God. When I open my Bible, I read about Ruth. Do you know who Ruth was? 
Oh my goodness, she was no. she she was such a kind woman. And we when I see Ruth in the Bible and I read about her, then I am told about how she was so dedicated to her family. What about Daniel? Do you know anything about Daniel? No. A guy named Daniel? Okay. What what do you remember? Cal? Uh, Not much? Yeah, he, got thrown into the pit of lions. he did. He got thrown into a pit of lions. Do you know why? When I see Daniel in the Bible, I'm told about how he was what? He was caught praying to God, even though they said no. He was faithful, right? What about this lady named Mary? Have you ever heard of her before? Yeah. Just a bit? Yeah. Oh, we've got one. We've got a winner. Okay, what do we know about Mary? She gave birth to Jesus. She gave birth to Jesus. Now, was she expecting to have that job? Do you know the important words that Mary said when she found out about it? No. Nah. Okay, let me tell you. <laughs> Not planned, by the way. Um, when she found out, she said, I will do what the Lord commands. I am his servant. When I see Mary in the Bible, I am told about how to be God's servant. Now, are you sitting down for this part? Whew. You, each of you. Why did you ask us that? Well, I was being funny. You, each of you, each of you are God's show and tell. When people see you, they are told about Jesus. Right? When you pick a pencil up off the floor for your friend at school, they see Jesus. When you hold the door open, at the grocery store, they see Jesus. When you sit with the lonely kid on the playground, they see Jesus. They view Jesus through you. It's as simple as that. It's in the Bible over and over and over again, but it's still happening right now, right? You are God's show and tell. That's an amazing responsibility, what, don't you think? What have you thought of yourself like that? God's using me today to be his show and tell. Would it change the way you act? Maybe? Yeah. It would for me. I, I'll confess it. Yes, no, maybe so. Sometimes we say that. Yes, no, maybe so. Because maybe you're already doing the good things. Or maybe when you hit your brother and then you run, you would do something differently? <laughs> okay, let's pray. Well, we'll talk about that downstairs. <laughs> Dear God, thank you for today and for these children and the adults that brought them here. God, you do some amazing things, and we learn about them in the Bible. You show us and you tell us all the time. Help us be the best show and tell you've ever given to the class of the world. We love you so much, God. Thank you for loving us. And we all say, amen. Friends, as we continue to try to cut down on the movement around the worship space when we gather here on Sundays, we are still just collecting your tithes and your offerings and your connect cards in the plates out side in the narthex. So here, presented as our musical off offering today, we are fortunate enough to have the choir here, and it's going to be wonderful. At the conclusion of their performance, we're going to let them have a seat. We're going to offer up a prayer of thanksgiving over the offering that, that we have, and after that, we will stand and sing the doxology.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for the faithfulness and the generosity of this church family here in Mont Heights. For their commitment, God, to supporting the mission and the ministries here. For the giving and the sacrificing of their time and their talents and their resources to build your kingdom. God, we ask your bless upon the gifts and upon the givers. But may you take it. But you take it. Bless it. Multiply it. Send us out of this place, Lord. Spread the good news. To shine your light a little farther. To expand just a little bit of the hope and the peace and the joy and the love that we celebrate this day into the corners of this community and this world that may not know it yet. Lord, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. Our gospel less lesson for this morning comes from the gospel according to Luke. We're in chapter 1, verses 46 through 55, and in the New Revised Standard Version, this comes under the heading of Mary's Song of Praise. Friends, I invite you to hear, hear these words. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Lord, come fill, come fill this room, God, with your presence. Come bring your word to life for us this day. Here and now, Lord, I pray that I will decrease so that you, God, will increase. God, come speak to us here and now, Lord. Your children, we are gathered, we are waiting, and we are longing to hear from you. Amen. All right, friends, here we are. It's week four of Advent, my God. Goodness, time has flown by. Week four of being in the inn. We've kind of been take, taking a look each week at what, what it means to house the holy. I, I love preaching at Advent, too, by, by the way. Not sure if everyone knows. I, I, I believe it was December of 2017 that I first stood up here to give a message. There's something about the tree and the songs and all that stuff. 
So just to recap a bit where we've been these last few weeks, we've been asked to consider decluttering our lives, our ca calendars, our schedules just a bit here during this Advent to get ourselves ready. We've been asked to make room at our tables. And last week, I think we were really asked to consider just how much that we really need. We are faced with the question of how much is enough. Now, today, what, what I think we're invited to today is to kind of take a, take a step back. To take a, to take a step back just a little bit and look from our room with a view that God has prepared for us, or now that we have made with the work we've done the last three weeks. We have the words of the prophet Micah, and then we have Mary, who's really utter, uttering a prophecy of her own. I'm going to backtrack just a little bit here. They're going to sneak a third scripture lesson in today. Because I want to make sure that we get the setting for Mary's song, for Mary's prayer. We're still in Luke 1. We're just going to jump back to verse 30, 39. Here. This is where Mary goes to see her aunt, Eve. Elizabeth. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. There's a lot going on in this scene and it sets up, it sets up the magnitude and the power of Mary's prayer. Now, I think this is one of the places just where stylistically Pastor Angie and myself differ. And it's a good thing. I'm not able to put my hand on my hip and talk to y'all like your mama. Just won't, won't, just won't go well. So I, I, I read this about Mary and Eve. Elizabeth and John the Baptist, who's inside Elizabeth at this point, Jesus, who's inside of Mary. And I see this scene that takes place, and the way that my mind works is I just want to think about, you know, who, who am I in this story? Who are you in this story? Where, where, where are we in this little snippet of Scripture? I think there's a place for each and every one of us. There is Elizabeth who upon seeing Mary can just tell, can just recognize that something is different, that something amazing has happened and is going to happen. Elizabeth sees God's grace at work within Mary, and you know what she does? She tells her. She affirms it for her. Elizabeth sees in Mary God at work, this little spark of the divine, and she's moved to, to prayer and to tell her that. What if she doesn't? The words of Mar Mary's prayer, her song of praise, her prophetic utterance comes in response to what Elizabeth says. To be an Elizabeth for a Mary right now, today, to affirm the presence of God's grace in someone else, to, to affirm that maybe they are made in God's image, worthy of love, I'm going to get way off track. To be an Elizabeth for a Mary today, absolutely can be life-changing for the person on the receiving 
end of that. So, so we have that at play. We have little baby John the Baptist inside of Elizabeth, who at the very presence of Jesus showing up, leaps for joy inside his mom. I, I would love to say that I am constantly, frequently leaping for joy at the presence of Jesus Christ within me and within those around me, but I very easily get distracted weighed down by the superficial things and by the human things and lose sight of that little divine spark inside each and every one of us. John the Baptist do, do, doesn't, can't even walk or talk yet, but responds, responds to the goodness of God in his presence. And then there's Mary. And Mary, in this moment, who has nothing short of a divine rev revelation. In light of all that she has seen, all that she has heard, the scripture she's been taught since she's a child, the words that the angel has spoke to her, all these things that she's treasuring up in her heart, Elizabeth speaks to it, confirms it, affirms it, and in this moment, she bursts forth in song and prayer and in prophetic voice that so many prophets spend pages and pages and pages upon trying to articulate. Mary, in just a few verses, sums up what the coming kingdom is going to be like. It's amazing. It's amazing what, what happens. I mean, this is what that Micah and Isaiah and all the prophets were looking forward to. What Mary articulates here. What Mary articulates. She's not a Levite. She's not a priest. I mean, re re remember just for a moment, at this point, who Mary is. She's a young person. She's a woman in a, in a time where that was not a good time to be one. On top of that, she's unwed and she is pregnant. She is as vulnerable as it gets. But she is about to utter some brilliance here in her prayer and her song that we should all listen to, that we can all take instruction from. So I just wonder, friends, if we have anyone in our life like that. Someone young, female, male, unwed, pregnant, different race, different orientation. I wonder maybe if there's someone in our life who maybe we should be listening to. So Mary provides us a wonderful example of what we can get. See, th th I think here in these four, in, in these verses that Mary breaks out, in her song of praise, I, I think there are really four great lessons that we can take uh, way. And the, the commentaries go back and forth about the order, the importance, but so well, that's for theo theologians to figure out. And there, there, there are four great things that Mary does here in her song of praise. Mary rejoices in God. In her unique circumstances, everything that makes her who she is, they are on the doorstep of her aunt and uncle's house. She says, my soul magnifies the Lord. That word soul, we can unpack that in the Greek. It, it, it can mean life, heart, mind, the immaterial and the eternal part of the inner person. 
the animate self, her soul, everything about her that makes her a living human being, everything that makes her something that's identifiable as a living presence on earth. Her soul magnifies the Lord, not her actions, not her words, nothing that can be defined by something simple. Her soul, her very life and existence and her essence magnifies, magnifies the Lord, gives glory to God, regards highly, praises, exalts, to lengthen, to expand, literally, the word mag, mag, magnify here, to manifest to an extraordinary degree. Mary says, my soul, the very bit of life that makes me who I am, will manifest God's glory to an extraordinary degree. You do it, do it, doing that, friends. I, I'm, I'm falling so short of, of that. I tried to rewrite this twice and take this out. And I just can't. To manifest to an extraordinary degree everything that she is in honor and glory to God. So she rejoices in God with all that she is to the broadest expanse that we can imagine. It's the first thing that she does here in this song of praise. Next thing that she does is she recognizes and reveals that this is all about God and God's grace. God looks with favor upon his lowly servant, is what she says. Servant here literally being the exact same word used for a female slave. God looks with favor upon his lowly servant, and the mighty one has done great things for me. Mary's own words. It's nothing then that Mary has accomplished or done on her own. God's choice. God's choosing to pour out grace and favor upon Mary. It is all God's grace. Next thing that Mary does, this is where she starts to get really prophetic, is Mary declares what God's victory is going to look like. It is the hungry who will be fed, the lowly who will be lifted up, the proud that will be scattered. It's a very diff different kind of way that we may come to expect to see victory. Right? To the victor goes the spoils, to the one who conquers comes the reward. But Mary says, no. We're going to feed the hungry. We're going to lift up the lowly. We're going to scatter the proud, and we're going to gather those who need to be gathered. That's who God is going to show his mercy to. So doesn't this, doesn't this fit pretty perf perfectly into the story of what the Jesus Christ does and is as the vessel of God's grace for the world. This comes as a fragile, delicate baby laid in a manger. This killed a criminal's death, laid in a tomb, but resurrected and conquers our sins, restores us to a right relationship with God. And does that by feeding the hungry, going and loving and bringing in the outcasts and the lowly and calling out the hypocrisy of the proud. Man, Mary is nailing it. The last thing that she does here, which is so, it's just so cool. She's able to tie her present into the future. 
says that all generations will call me blessed. Here in this moment on Elizabeth's front porch, she looks ahead. I think just gets a glimpse of what's really going. She takes the words that the angel has given her. It's all starting to come to become clear. I think she starts to get it just a little bit. Wow. All generations, all future gen- generations are going to look back upon this, are going to call me blessed. She makes reference to the promise made to Abraham and to his descendants forever. All of his descendants forever, not just in a certain time frame. Abraham, after all, the father of many nations, not a single nation. Mary, young, unwed, pregnant, virgin Mary, reminds us that it is all nations who are about to be blessed, who are blessed. I mean, every single one of these lessons would go on to really be modeled in the ministry of Jesus Christ, which we are called to emulate, by the way. So so I think if we're looking for some kind of catchphrase, a mission statement, or something maybe concise to ground us and center us as we gather together during this season, friend, I, I, I ask you to consider and take a close look at this prayer of Mary. You know, this, these few verse, verses here, I think, actually sum up our entire Advent series that we have looked at so far. If we want to magnify the Lord in our lives, in our family, our, our workplace, our community, I think before we can let the Lord become bigger and make him bigger, we probably need to make room for that to happen. that if we want to acknowledge that it is the grace of God that is at work, then we might need to make room at our tables who will, for some people who are going to speak some truth to us. To remind us that it is God who chooses us, God who shows us favor, and it's not earned on our part. As Mary talks about what God's victory is, is going to be like, who gets fed? Who gets saved? I think she's encouraging us to re-examine and remember again what that God's success will look like. It's that if you have two cloaks, you give one to somebody else. It's not about having the most stuff. And then she invites us to take a step back and observe from our room, our room that God has prepared for us here and now, And look at just how big that God's promise is. So as we head into Christmas, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming within a week. I I invite you to read over Mary's song of praise a few times in the coming week. I invite you to keep decluttering as you can and as you are able. Keep making room as you can. Keep re-examining and re-prioritizing. And then consider. Consider what others are observing about you. Kelly, once again, just nailed it with her message with the kids today. It's just like Elizabeth sees in Mary God's grace at work, the divine spark, something truly amazing and magnificent. As we house of the Holy Spirit, carrier of the likeness and the image of God, what are people observing about us? And is it worldly or is it godly? And how can we get in step and in line with where that Mary calls us to be in her prayer this day? Friends, I invite you to Join me in reflecting on that this week. Amen and amen. Let let us pray.
holy, and everlasting God. You are so good. You are so good. You look down upon us who are lowly and frightened and hungry and anxious. And you choose to pour out your mercy and your grace and your love upon us. Lord, help us to take some fresh inspiration from the words of Mary this this week. As we continue to prepare and make room, may we be reminded of the power that comes from glorifying you, from magnifying the amount of you in our lives in everything that we do. How that we can manifest, God, you here in this world. We can put you on display. That people will see it and they will recognize it. And that they can respond to it. May we go out boldly this week and seek people who we can make leap for joy just at your very presence, Lord Jesus. May may we speak the words of affirmation and confirmation to those around us who we see doing wonderful, good works, God, in your name. Lord, and if you choose, if you so choose to give us a word of wisdom that we can utter, to try to put in perspective God, just how great you are and how much that you love us in these coming days where the world may be a little more ready to listen. May we have the confidence of Mary to say the words, God, that you have put on our heart. So Lord, we ask your blessing upon this time of worship, upon your church here in Montford Heights. And we thank you. We thank you calling us, and choosing us to represent you here in the world. Lord, in your great mercy, we ask that you hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, I invite you now to stand and let's join in the singing of our sending song this morning. It's number 234 in your hymnal, O Come All Ye Faithful, just verses 1 through 4.
My friends, may this be a week where we bend our joyful footsteps in such a way that people follow us to see Jesus. And with our souls, we magnify the Lord. Grant us, O God, that what we have said with our lips we might believe in our hearts, and what we believe in our hearts may we practice it in our lives. Through the power and the love and the mercy and the grace, comes from God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My friends, you may go in peace. Amen.